a first NHL goal, the Ducks don't embarrass themselves on national TV, but still lose. The Ducks' first Canucks game was about as perfect of a tank game as you can get for the Ducks. This was the only NHL game of the day, which meant there were a lot more eyes on the Ducks than usual. Probably more eyes than Ducks fans would like, given the way the Ducks have been playing, especially this last month. In the first, Vancouver would score on the power play. Dostal saves the initial Hughes deflected shot, but Besser gets the rebound. In the second, it would be the same story, as the Canucks would score another one on the power play. This one was much flashier, however, as Joshua is left all alone in front, giving him all the time to go between the legs. Dostal tries to poke it away, but if you miss with a poke, those usually go in, and it would go in, top corner for a great finish. Ducks down 2-0 to start the third, and they come out flying. Olin Zellweger would get the Ducks on the board with his first NHL goal in his 19th game. He goes short side, bar down, for just an absolute nasty snipe. What makes it even better is that his parents were there to see it in person. Congrats, Zelly. The Ducks' fun wouldn't stop there, as a minute and 11 seconds later, Mason McTavish would get one. Zegers drops the puck to Lindstrom, who wraps the puck around the net to the front, and McTavish has a wide-open net. That was the most excited and happy I've been watching Ducks hockey in a long time. Good to see Mason get on the board again. It was a battle the rest of the third, but fortunately, I I mean unfortunately, the Ducks would again leave Joshua all alone in front again, and he cashes in once more. The Ducks pulled Dosti for the extra skater and didn't even get a shot on net. Just like when they had the extra skater for the power plays in this game. Brown specials all night long. Ducks lose 3-2, but it was a really solid outing for the Ducks. They competed hard. Terry looked like the best player on the ice. Carlson wasn't afraid to shoot. And while defensive breakdowns and undisciplined play continues to happen, 5-on-5, the Ducks matched well against the team with nearly double the amount of points in the standings. And that's all we can ask for. Maybe it was because the Ducks made some lineup changes in this one, since Minty left late last game when he took a puck to the knee. He's considered day-to-day now, so Zelly was back in, and that paid dividends. Zegers was put on McTavish's wing, but unfortunately they were still sandbagged by Strom. But I actually liked the change during the game. Stromer, I guess, didn't look too much like a sandbag in this one. Also, it's a miracle. Ross Johnson was a healthy scratch? Are we finally being smart, or will he be back in the next game versus the Flames on Tuesday at 6 p.m., the last game of the road trip? Let's talk some prospects. The Ducks signed Nico Majadovic to his entry-level contract two days ago and has already played two games with the goals on the fourth line. Just getting his feet wet. Sam Colangelo's college hockey career comes to an end as Western Michigan loses an OT to Michigan State. Beaker said he has full plans to sign him after the tournament, and I would expect we should get some news on him soon. Someone who won't be here, however, at least till a few more weeks, is Cutter Godier, as BC makes it to the Frozen Four after winning an OT. BC doesn't play again until April 11th, meaning the max games Cutter could play this year with the Ducks is now three games. That will do it for this video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and go Ducks! When you wish upon a star, nothing happens.